He is a Army brat, so he hails from everywhere, but most identified with Miami. And he currently teaches a cyber boot camp at Case Western. Let's give Mark a warm round of applause. Thank you. So um, as everyone's making their way in, I'm going to stand here so the recording uh, can be picked up. But uh, I appreciate all the, the attendance here, and welcome to B-Sides Augusta. It's actually my first time attending as well. Uh, a little bit about the talk before I jump into the slides is uh, it does have a happy ending, right? And so with that, uh, I have some humor uh, in, in the slides. But I understand that uh, some people may be coming across this talk after the fact and may be in a crisis mode. Uh, and so I do want to pay attention to that and have sensitivities of that. Um, but with that being said, I hope it's enlightening. I hope you find it useful. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to the questions that come out of it uh, at the end. All right, so as my talk is titled, Taken, what happens when a half or star goes missing. So a little bit of background about myself. Uh, this is my 19th year of service in the Army. Uh, I started off uh, as a linguist and I did intelligence work for about the first 10 years of my career and then switched over to cyber operations. And so I learned uh, how to spell IP address somewhere about midpoint in my career and then from there uh, learned how to put pieces together to figure out how to provide intelligence to our nation, to our military. And so when this event happened, uh, and it's exactly 366 days ago, so yesterday, uh, I was going to go to B-Side last year, but wasn't able to attend uh, for obvious reasons that I'll be getting into. All right. So um, today's story, let's give some background bullets, right? So we have digital footprints everywhere we, where we use our devices. We have uh, all these identifiers that make up who we are, right? Uh, I'll talk about my family dynamic a little bit without getting into too many details. Uh, I'll also be disc uh, discussing sort of what was going on in my head at the time at different moments, right? Because it's difficult to make decisions. It's difficult to think through your analytic processes when you have so much emotion going on, right? We still have a home, a home to run. Okay, um, she happened to leave her devices, which is, I think, uh, an interesting point, and we'll talk about that. Uh, how I came up with a different plan, and then actually getting into how you wrangle the data that you have once you have it. All right, um, she eventually makes it home. I engage with law enforcement multiple times, and we'll talk about that and what that looked like. And uh, then I'll open it up for questions uh, and discussion. Okay, so if we think about it, it should come to no surprise with us as people interested in cybersecurity or as enthusiasts that every piece of technology we interact with, if it's network connected, has some sort of identifier associated with it, right? If you have your phone, you have uh, a SIM card, right? You have a mobile equipment identifier, you have a MAC address. You have an IP address that's assigned to you at that time. Every application you use that's internet connected also has maybe its cookies that it's leaving in your device, right? So think about that. Now multiply that across a household. Multiply that across family and friends you know. There's a lot of different identifiers that are out there, so we'll be putting those pieces together to talk about uh, what happened uh, in, in my life last year. Okay, so background setting, it's early October. Uh, we just had a great summer vacation. Uh, my family homeschools, right? Uh, we're a foster family, and we're a household of eight. Uh, right now there's two preschoolers, four teenagers, right? So we're, we're a pretty busy home. Uh, so yeah, there's a... Uh, it was a complete shock to us uh, when this happened because my daughter, uh, and sometimes I'll reference her as my daughter or just as D, right? Uh, she had been with us for a year at that point. She came to us in October of 2021. Uh, she's actually like third or fourth cousin of my wife's like extended, so they reached out to us from another state uh, because we were licensed here in Georgia as foster parents to see if we would take her in and we said absolutely, right? Uh, and so, not too much detail, but a little bit. She uh, was in and out of care from an early age uh, and had different traumas in her life that really complicate the situation uh, as we look at what happened. All right, so the phone call. Typically when I'm at work, right, I'm there, getting ready for the day, and uh, there's a lot of people in the audience who have, have had the pleasure of working with over the past, and I get in my zone, and I'm ready to go. And there was this big meeting that I had to get ready for, uh, a briefing with somebody that had stars on their uniform, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'm ready to go, and all of a sudden, a phone call comes up. And I have a call ID. It's a phone that looks almost exactly, if not exactly like this. 
comes up to call her name my wife, and I'm like, okay, it's after nine, she's getting their school day started, I must have left something, like, in a weird spot, or, like, I, I took something and moved it, so that's what I'm thinking, like, hey, Mark, where'd you put the fill in the blank? And, and then, so I'm like, all right, let me pick this up right before I walk away from this meeting, and uh, I picked it up, and my wife is freaking out, and she's like, She's not here. Our, you, you know, D is not here. I looked here. I looked there. I was like, all right. Well, we, we've been doing like fire pit stuff. Uh, so maybe she's outside. She wants to, you know, do a morning fire pit thing. Nope. I checked there. I checked, and she's gone. She's absolutely gone. And so, I was like, this makes no sense. We were in a really good spot with our family. What is happening? And so, you know, you start to think about all the different things that could have taken place. Um, okay, what, you know, was there foul play? And, I, I had no idea at this point. All I know is that, okay, I need to stop my work day and I need to go home, right? And so thankfully I have a lot of uh, supportive people uh, in the office where I work that have absolutely been, uh, were phenomenal through this process, right? And so, yep, I picked up, I said, I'm not going to that meeting and I'm leaving. Uh, my daughter's gone and because she, uh, you know, is in a vulnerable state, we wanna make sure that um, we can, I can take care of this. No questions asked, I was able to go. Right. Uh, my immediate thought on driving home was, is this happening? Uh, what can I do? Starting to have my analytical brain sort of like come together and, and think about what are my next steps? What's my next move, right? So from a planning perspective, like, okay, we're, we're clearly gonna be able to have um, law enforcement come out, uh, we'll have them with their dogs, and they'll be able to like smell her stuff and then we're gonna find her. Like she just walked away and we'll, we'll know what happened. Um, but that wasn't, wasn't that cut and dry. So the investigation begins. While I was on my way home, the, uh, our local county's deputies came out and they were already at the home going through the house and figuring out what happened uh, from their perspective. And so I, I pull up and there's, there's, uh, there's, um, there's police cars in my driveway. And first thing I thought was, whoa, she left her devices. This makes no sense, right? Like what teenager doesn't take their devices with them? And she's 17 at the time. Uh, and so I was like, that doesn't make a, a, a ton of sense. And then the law enforcement agents kept asking, okay, well, does she have another cell phone? Maybe we can ping it. And I was like, no, this was the only thing that, to our knowledge, that she had. Uh, and so that was frustrating. Like, oh, man, she didn't bring anything, so we can't find her right away. And then I thought, hey, she left her devices. I, I can figure this out. Like, I know what I'm doing. I, I can put these pieces together. Let me figure out, and, and so I was almost worried that they were going to you know, take all of the devices and, and like I wouldn't be able to see them. Uh, but because she was 17, um, and because, as you see on the slide, she left a note, there were very limited resources that went into the case from a law enforcement perspective. Uh, and to complicate the situation, you know, we were trying to think, all right, what did we do wrong as parents? Um, what's happening here? But the note, uh, you know, I'll sum it down into one or two of the lines. It basically said, thank you for giving me a year of a childhood that I didn't think was possible from what happened in my life. I love you, and I'm so sorry to disappoint you. And that was to me and my wife. And I was like, I, I don't know what happened. This is all very confusing. Um, and so that's the emotional aspect of what's happening in my head as I'm trying to put these different pieces together. All right, so the starting context for this, I had one iPhone, I had a Windows laptop that she was using for school stuff, there were three social media accounts that I knew about and one email account that I, I knew about, right? And so I started immediately just like, you know, tapping and clicking through stuff and I, I'm just looking for that one piece of information that was like, okay, she went here. She looked up Greyhound, so she went to the Greyhound stop, right? And so that we're gonna go find that. Uh, and so it was, a, it was a very reactionary. And so if, you've, if, you know, if anyone finds themselves or know, knows of a family member um, or happens to have a, a terrible thing like this happen, like your vision is going to be clouded. Your judgment, your, your planning, your decision cycles are going to be impacted by that. Um, so, I mean, we had friends all over the, uh, the CSRA saying like, okay, and to, so I'm local here to the Augusta area. <clears throat> and uh, they said, okay, yeah, we'll call Greyhound. We'll, we'll go here because uh, we had seen that on the computer. And, uh, then I realized, okay, there's a lot of these accounts that she had that are logged out. I was like, why? Why are these things logged out? She never logs out. So to give some additional context, right? She had been in different programs that didn't allow her access to technology um, all through, you know, from ages like 10 through 16, really, until she came to our house. And so she didn't uh, use technology like a, a standard 17-year-old would today. Uh, and so she, she even would admit, um, and I. 
just for uh, full disclosure, we did talk about like how I was going to present this, and I have her permission to share this part of the story um, with you all today. Right? And so she's like, I had no idea what I'm doing with technology. Like, how do I use? Like, why do people care about Instagram? Like, she asked me. Like, a 17 year old asked me. I was like, I don't mind use Instagram, right? Like, I see stuff. Um, but so she was still like just starting to get used to these things, and so she wasn't really tech savvy in her own words. She's she's not your standard user of of the technology that um, our teenagers use today. Right, and so the initial thought came up was, okay, who is involved? Who is involved with doing this? And who am I up against, right? Because I noticed the passwords were changed. Um, I noticed that things were logged out and I'm just a quick scrape of the browser history. And so I'm trying to understand who my adversary is, who has impacted my family in this negative way. I'm trying to say, okay, who who is doing this and why are they doing this? Uh, and so uh, let's get into that a little bit. For the next. So yeah, these are the devices that I, that I had. Uh, and so I started with organizing my plan, right? And so some of my training is, you know, put me in a, a position where I have to think about, okay, if we're going to do a specific action, right? I start my military planning process and I'm like, all right, I need to gain access to the accounts, all the accounts that I have artifacts for. I need to understand what data is on those accounts. And then I need to parse that for, for different insights. I'm just going to talk collective, collect all this data together, put it in one spot, and then clearly I'll have something that I can tell the authorities about what happened, and then they'll, they'll put the resources behind it to be able to uh, find her, right? And so uh, first stop was, was the browser history. So she had signed out of a, a Google account on her phone, but the browser itself, uh, and the Gmail account was signed up, but the browser itself was still signed in. Uh, and so I leveraged that to be able to start doing my triage. What I noticed on the initial manual review were various Facebook log, like Facebook logins and logouts. Uh, there was a, a creation of a couple different Google accounts and a creation of a couple different Facebook accounts. Uh, the new Facebook and Google accounts uh, went through various rounds of password changes over a course of two days. Uh, I noticed that there were chunks of history that were deleted uh, that didn't make a ton of sense. And then I saw in the history a login page uh, for Bethany Smith. Her name is not Bethany Smith. Uh, and I was like, okay, who is that? Is that somebody that helped her? Is that somebody, is this the person that I'm up against? Who's, who's Bethany Smith? Uh, and it turned out that it was actually uh, a fake account that she had made in order to have communications with a couple different suspects that we'll get into, right? So I then started to say, okay, based on what I know, what account artifacts there are, I have uh, some accounts that are signed out, which ones? Uh, so I noticed that it was Messenger for iOS uh, and for Windows, like she had logged out of Facebook. Uh, and then when I was going through that, uh, on the phone itself, I could see that <coughs> if, you're, if you use Instagram messaging uh, or like through Messenger or Facebook, if you add another account to that, you'll, you can see what accounts you have tied to that device. And so, I noticed Bethany Smith had a login on her uh, on her phone. So I said, okay, that's that's who Bethany Smith is. She created an alias. And so immediately I told uh, the investigators, and this is all that same evening uh, that I'm going through, just the browser part and just looking at the devices. So I, I, I let the investigator know, the deputies that came to our house, hey, there, she could have an alias of Bethany Smith. As I didn't cover more, I see a new Gmail account. Hey, she could have this uh, alias where um, she was Kay Lopez. Okay, and so clearly I'm thinking, all right, they're gonna put all these pieces together. Still didn't happen. Um, I did a password reset on her Google account because my thinking was, okay, if somebody is helping her and they recognize that she didn't uh, sign out of all the different aspects, they're gonna try to maintain that account and do account takeover of that and lock me out again further. So I said, all right, let me change the password on the, what I do have access to, which is her standard Gmail account or Google account. And then I'll use that to do a password reset on her standard Facebook account uh, because there was some data there as well. And so I did that and I was like, great, now I can start looking through uh, some of the details that are a part of those accounts that I now can sign into. All right, so this is what the initial picture looked like. I had um, a Google account, right, daughter at gmail.com, uh, and that was used to create her standard Facebook account. There was standard usage there, we knew about that stuff. Um, and then the atypical usage was that there was a Facebook account that was used for Messenger for both the iPhone and the school laptop with that strange at gmail.com 
address, which was used to create it, right? So this is the point that I'm at, I'm like, okay, I need, I need more pieces to this puzzle. I needed access to that um, Gmail account, and I, I had no idea how to get it. I uh, brute forced it as much as I could. Uh, I had other people trying to help me put together different password lists based on things, and uh, I just couldn't get it. I absolutely could not get it, and so it was frustrating. So I read through all of Google's account policies to figure out how do I reset the reset an account that um, I need access to? Because this is uh, already a day and a half, maybe two days later, where I, I kind of was stuck. The authority said, yep, we're on it. We're going to start our investigation and uh, let you know what happened. Try the best we can to find her. And so I'm going through reading, literally just reading Google password reset policies, trying to, I reached out to the law enforcement uh, email address that Google had uh, just to say, like, look, I'm not in law enforcement, but here's what's happening. And obviously, I get an email back. They said, it was a canned email, if anything, that said, uh, you know, thank you for your interest. Uh, you know, if this is a law enforcement request, somebody will get back to you. And so I did, was still waiting on that one. That didn't happen. Uh, but I did reach out to, to my network and ask, hey, does anybody know anybody um, at Google or uh, that can help me understand this? And thankfully, there was uh, somebody who had contacts and connections uh, with somebody at Google who kind of talked to somebody in their uh, law enforcement support case uh, office. And they, they helped me inform my local office, on my local sheriff's office, on what to do uh, in this case. I was like, all right, that didn't help me. I was, I was thinking maybe somebody's going to give me access to the account, right? Like, I, I was trying to socially engineer my way into Google with, with Google people, and that didn't work, surprisingly, right? Uh, so what I did find was that if you dig hard enough, there is a um, way to do an account recovery if you have these artifacts of different pieces of your persona, what makes you up on the internet. And so because I had a phone, that she had logged into with one account. And that data was tied to uh, the, the Google account that I needed to get access to, and so was the laptop. I was able to request this password reset, and I was like, awesome. And so I hit, I hit reset, and then it's like, thank you for your request. Please wait 48 hours. I was like, no, I, I'm not gonna be waiting 48 hours. Um, this is insane. I, I, I need access now. Uh, and so, and it said, and then we may, we may be able to give you access if our review team says like, yeah, you have enough of like the thumbs up stuff, like the green check and not red flags to say like, yeah, you can get into this account. What do I do in that time, right? And this is where, you know, I, I did reach out to my network. Uh, I pulled this out of my LinkedIn a year ago. Some of you, you know, were on that post. And I did get a hold of somebody uh, with, uh, at, at Google, like I said, and then somebody else at, uh, at Meta, at, at the, work on the Facebook actual uh, team of uh, incident responders for law enforcement requests, which was great. Uh, I had gained the access. They said I was legit and I got access to that account, uh, confirmed that I was able to reset the password for Bethany Smith. And then I was like, all right, I, I have stuff. And I looked through it and oh man, messages were deleted. Of course they were. All right, well Facebook, and a bunch of people were like, oh yeah, Facebook has archive messages. Just go back there and look at the archive messages. Those are deleted too. And again, putting things in context, she didn't have the tech savvy to know to go to those archive ones and delete it. So someone is clearly helping her. Someone is, is guiding her through this process. And so that's what's going through my head is, who is this person? Who am I up against? So here's where I'm at so far. Based on messaging history uh, and different things, there were two suspects. One was in Florida, Florida. The other one was in Oregon. There were deleted messages. Passwords were changed. And so I remember, uh, I forgot where I got the information from, but I knew that you could download like your entire history of Google and your entire Facebook or meta metadata, right? Uh, that's a play on words, I know. You'll see it a couple times more in the slides, right? And so that's where I was with this whole thing. All right, so I did just that. I went into the different providers. So in Facebook, I'm sorry, in um, Google, it's called Takeout. You can do Google Takeout. And you have the option to pull your data out of Google for uh, everything from your map searches to uh, places you've checked in. Literally every Google service that's out there, you can pull your data for and review that. And so I did that for both uh, the account that she normally used, but she had only had three years when she moved in with us. 
And I did that for uh, the one that she used to create that Bethany Smith Facebook account. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna find stuff. Uh, I want all the data, select everything and give it to me. And it's, uh, for Google, they give you output in a CSV. And so I was like, cool, I'm an analyst, right? I can analyze things in a CSV file, I'll drop it to Excel and you know, make pivot tables and do the whole thing, right? Uh, sweet, so I got that. And then that said, okay, you're, because you requested so much data, that's gonna take approximately 24 hours to download. So I was like, oh man. Uh, so I had uh, that request in, then I went over to Facebook and did the same thing for uh, the Facebook ones. Now, what I wanna show you on the slides has changed since last year, right? These companies are continuously innovating. They're always coming out with new ways to interact with your data. And so by the time uh, I was creating these slides, uh, all of the interfaces had changed. But the, the, the service still remains where you can download uh, your data. So Facebook metadata has two different formats. Mm -hmm. uh, you have browsable HTML files. Uh, there's some pros with that, right? It's interesting. Like, you take all these HTML files that they give you in your output, and you can browse through it. Uh, it's, it's really easy in, to interact with, and kind of gives a, a big, broad picture of what's going on with that account. The difficulty with that is that I know I needed more rich data to work with to understand all the details that were associated with what happened. And so I, I opted uh, then for the, the JSON data, which had those detailed, detailed records, but was so granular that it was difficult to eyeball parse, right? Not only that, but it's, there's so much, even for a young account, when, and by, what I mean by young is you know just recently created, that I, I quickly became overwhelmed. Meanwhile, uh, you know, having taller twins and other teenagers in the house, like there's, there's a lot going on at this time, uh, and so not a whole lot of sleep happening. There's all kinds of sightings of you know, potentially, oh, she's here, because my wife went into like overdrive mode, and started posting flyers, um, making all kinds of social media contacts uh, with, with different agencies across the country, uh, including the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, right? Uh, and so this is an example of what the data looked like in the JSON format, right? And it may be hard to see and understand that, uh, but what I want to draw your attention to is the timestamp. Uh, oops, sorry about that, wrong arrow. The timestamp here. So does anybody know what kind of timestamp format that is? Epoch time, right? That's the number of seconds uh, that have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. And I was like, okay, uh, yeah, I don't know how to like sort that in a spreadsheet, right? So I need to figure out a way to, to wrangle this. Now I did recognize some other things in uh, this JSON field, I'm sorry, in this um, key value pair that uh, I thought was really interesting. So one was a user agent string, and the other one was something called a data company. And I thought, huh, that's, that's interesting. Let me read more about that. So user agent strings are, uh, when we have different browsers that we use, uh, we use our user agent strings to interact with a web service, and it kind of tells a web server who you are, right? The device you're coming from, that way it can render the page to you the way that you expect, right? Or if you have a certain device, your user agent string you use from your, your handset or your tablet uh, will be slightly different so that the page can be sent to you or the service can be sent to you in a format that is easy to read, that's compatible with your device, right? And so that's some of the purposes of user agent strings. Now you can do analysis on the user agent string to show uh, more details about a device. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this to figure out some more details. Uh, along with, the, and, and I didn't know what a data cookie yet uh, was yet, but Facebook has really good documentation. And so I went and found out that, all right, a data cookie is, and I don't know if that's the way they say it, but that art, a that art cookie. So I'm just gonna say data, because it's fun. Uh, so a data cookie uh, is a cookie that Facebook puts on a device that signifies this is this device's cookie. It's not your account's cookie. It's the cookie for that specific device. So I have uh, my handset here, and I log into Facebook uh, and my personal account. Great, and I have a data cookie associated with that. Now, if I you know, hand my handset to my buddies over here, and they log into their account, their account is also gonna have that data cookie field but from my, my handset. So that's a key piece of what, uh, how we found out what was going on uh, that we'll get into in just a bit. But I still need to wrangle this thing. I still need to interact with it. And here's my Liam Neeson moment, where I thought, mm, you know, I know what, I, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? I just, I know that I know data. I know how to do analysis. If I can put all these pieces together, there's gonna be a way I can figure out what happened. And so, enter PowerShell. 
where I'm able to, and, and please scan the QR code, uh, that way you can see it links directly to uh, my GitHub page where I put together my you know, 60 line script to try and parse this data, right? Uh, so feel free to do that. I'm, I'm not a developer by trade, right? I'm an analyst who likes to push buttons and make things automated, and so uh, I like, uh, I'd like your feedback if you want to take it, you know, I'll entertain all the pull requests, fork it, do whatever you want with it. A um, <laughs> couple reasons, I started thinking like, okay, I've, I've used Python before too, I'm, I'm professional in Python, let me do this in Python. And, and it's on my local machine here, and I, I thought I could you know, wrangle JSON data with Python pretty easily, because uh, it's something I'm familiar with. But then I thought, what if somebody else is going through this, and you know, Windows having the market share does, I was like, let me wrangle it with PowerShell. Um, and get the fields that I want using PS custom objects to be able to look and produce a CSV that I can then analyze. <clears throat> so that's exactly what I did. And I'll leave this up for another minute um, while uh, if anybody else is scanning, right? Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that it's available at work. If you look for me, uh, script or not is my uh, tag on GitHub, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I don't use Excel all the time, right? I like to use interfaces. Uh, but when I do, it's on spreadsheets, right? So I had human readable timestamps because I, what, what I did, and I'll go back real quick, um, and I think if I jump over here away from the mic, and we look at line 25 is what did the magic for me, where I had to convert the epoch time to something that I could actually digest and parse and put together, right? So uh, I know that there were functions uh, built into uh, Python to help me do that. At first I thought maybe I should use nested bash, right? Like I could, you know, call my Windows subsystem for Linux and use bash to like convert the time easier. Um, meanwhile, still wrestling with the emotions of what's happening, right? Like my family feels like it's collapsing. And so I don't I don't know what the best approach is, but I'm like, okay, let's just PowerShell it out. And thank you Stack Overflow for having that wonderful line that uh, I was able to pull and, and uh, see that that's what I needed to get the <laughs> Uh, the way I needed it to look. <coughs> yeah, so I, I, I will spare you what my spreadsheet actually looked like uh, because there's a lot of fields, a lot of data, and that was going to be a lot to tokenize uh, for this brief. Uh, and so what I will represent, though, is the more clear picture of where we were at with the situation. All right, so up at the top, uh, all the way through the, through the bottom on the left-hand side of the diagram, that's what I knew before. We had that atypical usage with the Bethany Smith Facebook account. I did see contact with a suspect in Oregon uh, who was uh, a, a known sex offender, a known uh, person that was had abused her in the past. And that was scary. And we didn't know what was going on. Uh, and so then we had a, a search result and a messenger contact with a Florida suspect who was an extended family member of hers uh, that was also scary because that's this person has also been in and out of jail and we weren't sure uh, their intentions or, or how stable that person was what I did find through that spreadsheet analysis and through all of the um, the details was that there's an iPhone 13 that logged in to the Bethany Smith account after she was gone and it geolocated to South Georgia North Florida okay cool I let the detectives know right away hey this is what happened Oh, okay, thanks, right? Like, that's the best response I got. She's 17, you guys, like, we have other things to deal with. Unfortunately, there was a case um, in Savannah at the time where there was a two-year-old missing, uh, and so a lot of the state's resources were going toward that case. And so we were kind of like pushed off to the side, especially because she had left a note. She had left a note saying like, she was just unable to, to bear like kind of life circumstances uh, for her at the time. And so, they thought she didn't want to be found. She clearly, she changed all her things. And we tried our best to articulate, like, no, this is not her normal behavior, right? Like, yes, we've only known her for a little over a year, but this isn't standard for what she does. Uh, so yeah, this is this is the picture. So we were waiting, and uh, you know, I had that I had that uh, diagram up, and I went to my local sheriff's office. Uh, and I was sitting there and I printed everything out for them, made multiple copies, because that's what you do when you're every senior leaders, right? You print out the PDFs, <laughs> <laughs> drop it off on their desks. And I had every, every uh, detective that I could uh, sitting in that office going over some, some data with me. But this is what it felt like. And, and like, they looked at me like I was crazy. And 
I don't know how to, how else to articulate it, but when you have someone you love that's like gone and it's like crazy and you don't know what's happening, like you can probably come across like like Charlie does over here on the side. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to go over next are literally the briefing is literally the briefing the next couple slides that I gave to them uh, to try and help them understand what you're looking at and how easy it should be for them as law enforcement officers. To, and if there's any law enforcement officers in the crowd, thank you for what you do. Um, I'm not, I, it, ultimately there was great interaction, but what I found was that it was really difficult to articulate from a techie mindset, um, how, do I, how do I say like, this data's important, you need this, just go request it, because I can't. I'm at a limit of what I can do with what I know. And, and so I need your help, I was looking for a partnership uh, with them. So this is my briefing to them. Same, uh, same thing, I had obviously more enriched details that I took out uh, for this presentation, but uh, we explained who the Oregon suspect was, we explained who the Florida suspect was and the family relation. And so uh, we explained what an iPhone 13, you know, why that mattered and that no, that wasn't hers. Um, and so this is, I then went into, all right, there's an IPv6 address, so that's a real one, it's probably been re you know, reassigned since then. Um, but yeah, I was like, the customer assigned IPv6, here's why that matters, right? It's more granular. Uh, and it was with T-Mobile, because I looked at the registration records. And so all you have to do is contact T-Mobile, right? Like that's, just put in your law enforcement request. Um, and then I want to talk about Facebook Messenger. Like, what accounts are linked to the Messenger cookie starting with that string, and that's the actual string, right? Uh, and then I said, all you gotta do is, you know, find that out and then request from Facebook or Meta, you know, this Bethany Smith account, look for the, uh, the messages that have gone. I go into the significance of an IP address and I, I try to tell them what that looks like. And then I even gave them the wonderful resource of, here's how you do your job, right? You just gotta, you know, those people. <laughs> because I, I was literally at like my end of like, what I could do. I, you know, I was ready to like go apply to a law enforcement agency to say like, okay, I've applied, I'm close enough now, can you help me? Um, so yeah, I gave them that team of law enforcement process. And then I went over this with them, because I tried to make it really clear. Uh, this is some of the output you get from the HTML, which is great. No, it doesn't have the graphics. I stole that from my Visio license that I have. Um, and so I said, look, the Facebook Messenger cookie, those data, data cookies, I didn't call it data because I didn't throw them off. I just said, look, Facebook Messenger browser cookies. Um, when you use your actual browser, whether that's you know, Firefox, Edge, Chrome, that's, you know, that's one machine. Each of those get a machine. And then the, uh, the app itself gets a machine or it's machine identifier uh, for the data cookie. And I said, look, there's a significant event, big red arrow, right there. This is, look at the date, date, date timestamp. They're after, they're after what, you know, was she, she was gone, so go find that, right? Um, and I told them the significance of it, right? So here's a quick little like story I tried to give them. I was like, imagine you have a drug dealer that you're tracking, and this person has tons of different burner accounts, but they're using one phone, right? So if they're using one phone, but they have all these different accounts, all those accounts, if you're able to tie it back to that one data cookie, you have your suspect. And because some of the uh, detectives were um, narcotics detectives, and I was like, okay, yeah, this should make sense. And there's something I want to get. Okay, I see that. And so I was like, great. Let's talk about the iPhone 13. It was used after. Like, I made it really clear because some people don't like to look at timestamp data, even with a big red arrow that says significant event. So I went over, <laughs> I went over why this phone mattered, right? Uh, and where the geolocation was, was for. And then I told them how to contact Facebook. <laughs> Here's how you do that part. So just please go do that, right? And this, you know, I sat in, the, this is across seven counties in two different states that uh, I was giving this briefing at while we were on the road, looking at different sightings that were happening, um, calls that we'd get from the flyers that we put out, right? Uh, so then we waited. Um, sorry, see what I tried to, yeah, that was just a Facebook thing. So then we waited. Three weeks went by, okay? Local law enforcement assured us that they were coordinating with other agencies, uh, and like I said, we went on the road. And we went to these other places where there were sightings, and their uh, police departments were, were happy enough to engage us, and they said, oh, you have to contact your local county to put in a request. Like, well, we did. Like, well, they never reached out, so there's not much we can do. Um, but I gave them a briefing anyway, uh, and they were kind enough to offer to go do health checks and stuff on the residence that we thought uh, she may be at. And they found nothing when they went and did that. Uh, and so we called our local detectives and said, hey, we're at County X in Florida. Can you guys call them and just say, we'd like your assistance? 
okay, yeah, we'll do that. Still didn't do it. So we drive back here to Augusta. We go down the road here to the DA's office, and I give the DA, the, the DA for this region, the briefing. And I say, look, you're a lawyer, right? This makes sense, right? This is the data points. We need that help. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes total sense. They reassigned a new detective for my county who was a little bit more enthusiastic and, and was offering to help us a little bit better with this. Uh, so we sit with them. They have connections with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the GBI. And uh, so we get a GBI analyst assigned to the case. She was awesome, right? Um, she looked at the briefing. She's like, yep, yeah, I'll talk to our cyber guys uh, that work just down, down the street at the Georgia Cyber Center, and we're going to figure this out, and you know, we'll be good to go. Your county just has to request GBI assistance. OK, so they request GBI assistance because we're all sitting in the same room, and it was hard to, for the local agency to say, like, no, we don't need you. Um, when they, Clearly hadn't done anything and got a you know slap on the wrist from the DA's office saying like you need to investigate when you know people bring things up, and so um, that new detective, the GBI, uh, actually agreed to do their, a real uh, investigation uh, with, of the forensics investigation of the devices. So I hand over the devices. Uh, they didn't find anything extra because uh, everything was done from an uh, internet perspective. Uh, and then what else happened is that they got the FBI on board because. Even though I had laid out, like, here's how you contact them, they just, I, when I talked to the people that I did have contact with at Google and at Meta, uh, and again, the person at Meta was, is like their lead for uh, law enforcement uh, cases uh, that come in. He said, yeah, as long as it comes from like, at sheriff's, sheriffsoffice.org, or like it's a real domain that we can tie back, like we'll, we'll go and engage with them. Uh, so even though I had, you know, given them that information, the GBI, um, and that new detective start working with the FBI, the local field office here in Augusta. We sit down and have a conference call with them. And they said, yeah, this is great. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to leverage something called our administrative subpoena power, and we're going to uh, put together all the details. And so we sit there and wait, like, okay, cool. Like, I gave them everything. Like, all you have to do is use your legal power now to go get the data, and we'll be good to go. And so uh, I waited for a week, and a week is a really long time when you're, someone you love is missing. And so I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I would call them up every day. Anything new? Yes, we have good data. We know what's, we, 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 we're in a good spot. They couldn't tell me anything for their operational security reasons. Uh, but we're in a good spot. You know, we, have, we know what we know. And trust me, things are in the works. Okay, cool. Things are in the works. She's not home yet. She could be being harmed. I don't know what's happening. So November 8th, I think the day was. Uh, there was a, my wife was out posting flyers or, or you know, trying to figure stuff out, meeting with different agencies, and <coughs> she gets a text on her phone from a number she'd never seen before. <coughs> Send cops to so-and-so's house. It's bad. Who is this? It's me. I'm sorry, I messed up. It's me. Are you, like, and so we'd gotten, all, we, the number of spam things we got saying like, we have your daughter. She's sick. You got to send us a million dollars right now, right? Like we got a ton of those from posting files. We do that. We would do that. We were you know, parts of that. So we weren't sure if this is one of those things. Um, but there were enough details to know, like, okay, this is this is real. And so um, deputies were dispatched, and uh, she was found. So what happened? Right? Life is messy. And so she uh, had reached out to a family member because she didn't think what was happening for that year that she was with us, like she was deserving of it. She didn't think she could deserve a real family um, with people that loved her and would like go on trips. And when she messed up, that it would be okay. And so she reached out to the person in Oregon, um, as often victims do, uh, that had abused her in the past, uh, to try and like get mad at him and like, write things. Uh, she reached out to that extended family member in Florida who was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll come pick you up, where are you at? And in her, you know, in her mind at the time, she's like, I'm, this is where I am. So she shared the, the general location of where she could be picked up. She changed her mind, but that wasn't good enough for this person who's dirt bag, right? And so he said, if you're not there at this time of day, I'm going to show up and shoot everybody in the house. So you better be there. And so she thought, I, I can't live with that. I have to be able to, uh, these people that, I loved, like I messed up. And so she went, she went. 
and they drove back to Florida. Um, so while she was there, they forbid her from using technology. Uh, every time that we sent law enforcement officers to the house from a request, they would hide her under the bed. Um, and then what actually happened was that uh, during a domestic uh, violence incident in the home that she was at, she was able to grab a tablet, remember my wife's number, but my wife made her memorized by heart, uh, and was able to text my wife. Uh, and then deputies were dispatched within minutes. And so why did I do this talk? This is, this is what happened. Um, because I, I found out through this experience that our, our local law enforcement agencies are really under-resourced when it comes to understanding digital investigations, right? So uh, I share this story to, to show that there are pieces out there, fragments of data, of information, that we can put together to help arm uh, ourselves with you know, the right kinds of tools in case something tragic like this happens. Uh, again, my, and with, with a positive story, she was back home, she's finishing up her senior year, or I guess midway through her senior year now of high school, uh, and she has big plans for the future, right? Uh, so the person that uh, did this, that extended family member, uh, is currently serving prison time. Uh, the, the charges were like interstate commerce laws and things, the FBI did the whole thing. Right, and uh, obviously they were found guilty uh, of that. Uh, there was also some charges about interfering with uh, a child custody case, because she is uh, considered dependent, like from that military DOD stuff, uh, because she's you know, she's our, our um, she's our daughter, right? That's the best way to say it. There's legal stuff, but she's our daughter. That's how we see her. All right. So that's the talk. And so with that, I'll leave this open to questions uh, for a few minutes that we have. Uh, and if you want to connect with me, there's uh, QR codes to get to my LinkedIn. Uh, please feel free to connect with me. Yes, you have a question in the back. I have it, but I did uh, start talking with a couple of uh, different volunteers. Or would you repeat this question? Yes. Uh, so the question was, uh, there is uh, companies out there, correct me if I'm wrong, that will, that have assistance to offer in these kinds of cases. Yeah, the specific one's called Trace Lab. Okay. And there are cybersecurity specialists that help train the products. Okay, yeah. Um, so I, I don't remember if it was Trace Lab specifically, but I did dialogue with some people in those organizations. So he, the gentleman here is speaking about Trace Labs, which helps people with cybersecurity professionals um, find their missing missing loved ones. And so I did have some, some online chats with people at various organizations like that, and they said, dude, you're you're on track. There's not, you can't do anything else. Um, and then they asked if I would want to volunteer when this was all done and she was back home. So and it's something I'd consider. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Question here, sir. Um, I was actually wondering, like, uh, what safeguards you put in place for uh, these kinds of events moving forward, like you were playing with yeah. Yeah. So, um, safe bars we put in place, right? Uh, we tell all our teenagers that we have. There's a fine line between like safety and privacy and allowing someone to uh, grow, right? Um, so, our approach has been keeping an open dialogue. But I did put some new policies um, on the devices. Uh, there are like open and I guess drop off your device here, we need to go through, you know, she's 18 now, so there's a different level of, of privacy that, that we feel as a family she's entitled to. And we have other, um, we have a 19 year old also that we, that we care for. And so we didn't put anything like that in place. Uh, going forward, we, our, our approach is having an open dialogue with our kids, but we do have other security measures uh, that we put for our family and for our own. Thank you. All right, so we do have two prizes to give away. On behalf of Mark, Mark, that's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you.